Brian Carlson. He was 16 years old at the time. He was out with his friends one night. It was 8 o'clock. Suddenly he realized it was Father's Day. And he had forgot to buy his dad a card. After much searching, Ryan located an open store. But he was disappointed to only find two cards that were left through the pick-through rack. Selecting one, he brought her home somewhat sheepishly, gave it to his father, and his dad opened it, and his dad read this message. It says, you've been like a father to me. And he looked at his son, Ryan, and he was puzzled. Well, Dad, Ryan tried to explain. It was either that card or the other one that says, now that I'm a father too. And it's funny because a, a, a wife was feeling ill. And guys, you know how sometimes we try to pick up the slack. So this husband volunteered to go to the store for her. She sent them with the detailed list, carefully numbering everything on the list. The list had seven items. When the dad shortly returned, he was so proud of himself because he started to unpack the grocery bags and he displayed his shopping skills to his wife. He had one bag of sugar, two dozen eggs, three hams, four boxes of detergent, five boxes of crackers, six eggplants, and seven green peppers. <laughs> Isn't that just like us guys? Or here's my favorite. A little boy said to his father, or he said, Father's Day is just like Mother's Day, only you don't have to spend as much on the gift. As you notice, I'm wearing my brand new Father's Day Raiders shirt. But Father's Day is just like Mother's Day, except you don't have to spend as much on the gift. I thought those were just some cute little stories. But look at what it says in Ephesians chapter 1, or I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 1. Again, I'm reading the modern English version this year. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, so that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. Father, this morning we pray, as we prayed so many times before, God, that no one would pass this moment the same way that they entered. God, I pray for every single person within the sound of my voice, those that are here this morning, those that are joining us across digital platforms. God, that you, by your Holy Spirit, on this Father's Day, would search our very heart of hearts. Lord, if there's something inside us that doesn't line up with your word, your character, your nature, then I pray that you would bring it to the forefront of our minds so that we could repent and we could make it right. Lord, I pray that your word would come alive to us and it would speak to our heart of hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look at what it says again. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Church Father's Day is scriptural. Fathers are a gift to their children. And children are a gift to their fathers. And so this morning, I want to spend just a few minutes and share three areas that God's Word teaches us about. Number one is faithful instruction. Number two is a father's love. And number three is a godly example of a father. Look at what it says, if you will, under faithful instruction in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 8. It says, listen, my son, 
to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teachings. I know growing up, there were times that I thought my dad just nagged for the sake of nagging. I felt like he would tell me things just because he liked to hear himself talk. I'm sure that my son must have thought that as well. But what we have to understand on this Father's Day 2020 is there is not a perfect dad out there. I know most of us probably have a coffee mug somewhere that says number one perfect dad, number one perfect husband, number one perfect grandfather. But let me just tell you that they make those mugs for anybody. <laughs> there are no perfect dads. And sometimes we don't always give the instructions the right way or with the right attitude. And that's why God needs to remind us. As a matter of fact, speaking about dads, let me just tell you that yesterday Kim and I watched the brand new movie called Selfie Dad. And I got to tell you, that was a great movie. It was a movie talking about how to be a dad. It was a great movie. But let me show you what the word says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. And I'm going to throw it on the screen in a couple of different translations. The NIV says it like this. It says, fathers, do not exasperate, exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. The contemporary English version says, Parents, don't be hard on your children. Raise them properly. Teach them and instruct them about the Lord. And then out of the Living Bible, which isn't a translation, but it's a paraphrase, the writer puts it like this. Don't keep on scolding and nagging your children making them angry and resentful. Rather, bring them up in the loving discipline the Lord himself approves. You see, we've always got to have a good motive. We've always got to be on the right step. There's a young man by the name of Jim Burton. Maybe some of you have heard him. And he was talking about being a dad. Jim Burton, was, when he was young, baseball was his entire life. And when his oldest son began to play baseball, it became one of their bonding mechanisms. It became one of the things that drew them together. Because of his baseball skills, he could help his son learn how to play better and hit better. He could teach him how to turn double plays. He could teach him all the little nuances that separate just being good to being great. But then soon a pattern started to develop. Because the dad was so familiar with the game of baseball, every time his son made a mistake, the dad pointed it out. Because he knew how to correct him. He wanted his son to be better than he ever was. So after the game, it became a critique on what he could have done a little bit different the next time to improve his game. Jim, when he's telling the story, says that it soon got to be old for his son. And one night as they were finally driving, as they were driving home, the son finally looked at his dad and he said, Dad! Could you stop, could you not start by telling me everything I did wrong? Could you not start by telling me everything I did wrong? He said, tell me what I did right. Guys, let me ask you this morning, are you a coach or are you a critic? You see, a good father is a coach. He's not critical. 
Mark Twain, when he was 14, said this. He said, when I was a boy of 14, my father was so ignorant, I could hardly stand to have the old man around. But when I got to be 21, I was astonished how much that old man had learned in seven years. You see his perspective. 14, we think, oh man, what's this guy talking about? And at 21, we realize, oh, there's something there. I probably should listen. The second example we can find in Scripture is that of a father's love. Look at what it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. It says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Look at verse 4 again. Then you will receive favor or you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. It was just a little over 72 hours ago when I got notified that on Friday there was going to be a special meeting of the Lincoln County Board of Commissioners. And at that meeting, they were going to look at an order that hadn't yet been written, but it was basically to limit the gatherings of Lincoln County to 10 people. And i got to be honest, I was a little bit miffed. That's probably true. I was a lot miffed. <laughs> so I got on the phone with the other pastors in the area. I sent out text messages. I went on Facebook and YouTube and I called our people and I said, listen, we need to write an email, we need to do whatever we can. And then just 24 hours later, I was on, yeah, in that meeting as they were talking there via live stream. As they went over the amount of emails that they got. And I was so excited when they ended that call and they excluded the faith community from having to go back to 10 people. Amen. But I'm amazed because even though my message was finished on Tuesday, I think, this week, when I was going through my notes again, I saw verse 4. And it said, Then you will win the favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Church, can I tell you it's important that we have a good name? Yes. Not only in God's eyes, but in the eyes of the community as well. Amen? Amen? And we've got to learn, guys, we've got to learn how to express things differently. If you're like me, you're not ooey gooey, you're not mushy. As a matter of fact, I've said for these last 13 weeks, this whole social distancing thing is kind of cool. I ain't got to hug nobody. Ah! I'm socially distancing. Somebody wants to come, oh, Pat, nah, nah, socially distancing. I love that rule. <sighs> but a lot of guys just aren't that huggy, feely, mushy, gushy. That's just, now some of you are. I'll pray for you. No, uh, some of you are. But I mean, I remember my own dad. The first memory I have of him saying he loved me was when I was 36 years old. And I had to initiate it. But it doesn't mean that my dad didn't love me. It just means he didn't know how to express it. He didn't know how to show it. I mean, a lot of times, Dad, we, we show our love by working. We show our love by providing. We show our love by trying to take an interest in what we did. I remember when Tim was growing up, I was so excited for him to start playing football. And he started playing soccer. 
Sweet Jesus, I didn't know anything about soccer. The only thing I knew about soccer is when I was in the fifth grade, the football coach came to me and he said, don't be a girl, don't play soccer. And I started playing football. And so I had to make a choice of whether or not I was going to be sad that my son wasn't playing football or I was going to become a soccer dad. And I chose to become a soccer dad. I chose to figure out the rules. I learned that I could be as annoying of a soccer dad as a football dad could be. When the coach one time looked at me and said, I'll coach. But when we spend time with them, that's, that's how we express our love. We express our love when we correct and we discipline our children. You know, sometimes dads are accused of being strict. But it's only because we want our kids to succeed in the hard, cruel world that we live in. We try to teach our kids how to develop a work ethic and get a good education. Now, i got to admit that I, I messed up early on with our son. When I told him that he should just strive to get a C. And my wife went, oh no, you don't. You do the best that you can. You shoot for an A. If you get a C, you get a C. I'm like, oh, yeah. That's what I meant, what your mom said. <laughs> you know, but we try to make sure that our kids marry the right kind of person. We try to protect them from the evils of society. And it, it's not because we want to be overbearing, per se. But it's just because we want the very best for our kids. But I think we need to tell our kids over and over and often that we love them because they need to hear that. Finally, the third thing that we can see from God's word this morning is a father's example. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, it says this. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. You see, Paul didn't say, do everything that I do. He said, do everything that I do, which you see me do. That's Christ-like. I know we're taking a week off from our study in Philippians this week. But I want you to understand that Paul wasn't perfect, and neither are we. We've all probably done things, we've all probably said things that we wouldn't want our children to repeat. She's probably not watching now, but her mom might be. Her dad might be. We have friends, her name is Gordon Denise. They adopted a little girl named Sarah. And one time, one time they were, we were all playing miniature golf. And Denise missed the putt. And it wasn't even close. And she said, crap. But instead of saying crap, she went crap, crap, crap. Nobody thought anything of it. And then little Sarah, that next week, said something happened. And she looked at her mom and she went crap, crap, crap. And her mom was like, <gasps> You see, we've all said things. I remember when Tim was little and he was in the back seat of the car and the guy was driving like a goober and I let him know how I thought he was driving from my car. I said, I can't believe that guy's an idiot. And all of a sudden this little voice in the back seat of the car goes, is that Papa's friend? He's an Indian? I went, little ears hear things.
And sometimes we miss the opportunities in life to point out the spiritual emphasis that it needs. Listen to this story of a, it's called a confession of a sad father. It says, I took my children to school, but not to church. I told them to drink, or I told, I told them to drink, but not of living water. I enrolled them in Little League, but not in Sunday school. I showed them how to fish, but not to be fishers of men. I made the Lord's Day a holiday rather than a holy day. I taught them that the church was full of hypocrites and made the greater hypocrite of them and me. I gave them a colored TV, but provided them with no Bible. I handed them the keys to the car, but did not give them the keys to the kingdom of God. I taught them how to make a living, but I failed to bring them to Christ, who alone can make a life. One dad told his boy, don't be like me, be like Jesus. And the boy replied, Dad, you be like Jesus, and I'll be like you. What a great example. Dad, you be like Jesus, and I'll be like you. You see, we've all done things, good things and bad things. And those things, whether they're good or bad, will leave an impression on our kids for the rest of their lives. I remember when our son turned 18 years old and I was trying to think, what would be the greatest gift I could hand my son for his 18th birthday? Wasn't an original thought to me, but I had heard it from someone else. And I thought, man, what a great thing. So I asked several pastor friends, men of faith who had been part of my son's life as he was growing up, to write him a letter. And they gave their letters to me and we put it in a book and we gave it to our son for his 18th birthday. So that wherever he got to in life, whenever he got to it in life, he could open up a book and he could read from godly examples of men who have been able to speak into his life at that point for the last 15 years. Let me share you this illustration, then we'll wrap it up. R.A. Torrey is a minister and a writer. He received a letter one day asking him to call on the woman principal of the school. He went to see her during a conversation. I don't believe anything. I don't even read the Bible because it seems wrong for me to read it and disbelieve everything in it. And after she had talked for some time about her disbelief, tears came to her eyes. And Dr. Tori asked her, why are you crying? And she said, oh, there's one thing that I can't get over. And that's my father's life. He was a minister. And whenever I think of the life he lived, I feel that there must be something to this Christianity. I just can't get over his life. You see, if we want our sons to be a man, to be masculine, to be honorable, if we want our daughters to be young ladies and to be feminine, then dads, we have to keep living a godly dad example. Because just like that principal who didn't believe in anything, she knew that the life her father lived as a Christian, as a minister, was real. And our kids, whether we get it right all the time, or whether we miss the boat, follow us. The 
those men who found it necessary to go see a neighbor who lived beyond a steep, rugged mountain. He climbed a dangerous trail and for some time drifted through the snow when suddenly he heard a little voice behind him. And the little voice said this, he said, Be careful, Daddy, because I'm walking in your steps. And guys, this morning we have to be careful because if we don't, our kids who are walking in our steps will make choices that could have disastrous consequences. Finally, let me close with this final thought. It's a story that goes like this. It says, several years ago, on a rainy August day, two young climbers decided to scale the highest summit in Switzerland, Mount Dom. Though they were young and relatively inexperienced, the two men felt confident in their mountain climbing abilities. Too confident. In fact, for despite the deteriorating weather, they boldly went forward from the tiny village of Rhonda at the base of the mount. Their goal was a halfway point called the High Hut, where they would spend the night before tackling the icy summit the next morning. The two moved quickly up the trail, and as the rain continued to fall and soon soaked through their inadequate clothing, at six o'clock the rain turned to snow. The trail became increasingly difficult to follow and they got lost. By 8 o'clock, night had fallen, it was pitch black. They were soaked, they were shivering, they were heading towards hypothermia. Just when their situation became desperate, something miraculous happened. Out of the darkness, a tiny little light began to flicker. Even at a distance, the faint glow shone as a bright lighthouse beacon to those shivering, frightened young men. Where did it come from? Well, before retiring for the night, the dawn's high hut keeper did what he always did. He placed a kerosene lamp next to the door, just in case someone needed it just in case someone got lost in the dark in the stormy night and his simple action saved two lives that night and this true story isn't just a warning for climbers but church it should be a call to every one of our men every single father you see, our kids start off with high hopes, and great dreams of reaching big places. And yet we know that they're walking right into a growing darkness of a fallen world. And dads, let me tell you this morning that your kids, our kids need a steady, guiding light. To always show them the way home. And the question for us this morning. Is will you make sure. That that light shines. I can't think of a better way to celebrate Father's Day. Then as, as men of the church, as dads, to be able to say, I'm going to make sure that my light is always on. So that my kids and my grandkids will always find their way back home. You see, we live in a world where sometimes people aren't the nicest. We live in a world where sometimes our kids fall off the path.
We live in a world that's quick to judge and to criticize. And sometimes our kids and our grandkids just need to know that it's safe to come home. And so this morning as we see these areas that God's Word teaches us about fathers, fathers need to be a faithful instruction. Fathers need to possess that father's love. And fathers need to look to the best godly example of who a father could be. And that's our father in heaven. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Father, thank you For every single dad within the sound of my voice. God, I'm so thankful that your word allows us to see that there can be a godly example. God, I'm thankful that your word encourages us that even though we mess up at times, we can still set that example for our kids and our grandkids. God, help us to always be like that one the keeper at the high hut. Who never forgets to put the light on. And God, I know sometimes we get tired. We're tired of putting the light on. They don't listen. They don't look for the light. I could be doing something else. But God, I pray that you would give us the intestinal fortitude to keep putting the light on. To keep setting that example. God, on this Father's Day, I pray for every prodigal this morning. God, that you would bring them back. God, help us to be like that. That, that father and the prodigal son's story. Who can't wait to celebrate. Lord, maybe there's some that are listening this morning that, that would say, Pastor, my, my bad choices have outnumbered my good choices. Sir, ma'am, let me tell you that it's not too late. You can make the best choice ever. By surrendering your will to that of Jesus. I know some of you are thinking, well, Pastor, I've tried that before. It hasn't worked. Let me tell you, you don't lose when you fall down. You lose when you fail to get up. So this morning, all you need to do Pray for your sons. Pray for your daughters. Pray for those that are away from him. If you're away from him right now, you just need to say, Jesus, forgive me. I surrender. Help me. Become my Lord and Savior. That's it. That now qualifies you as a king's kid. I'd encourage you to whatever platform you're on, would you just fill out that online card and let us know how we can pray for you. Those online connection cards come right to my email box. And we want to believe that this is going to be the greatest Father's Day ever. Because some of us have decided to give God the best gift we could ever give Him. 
and that's ourselves. So, Lord, thank you. Father, we pray that you would help us to live in such a way like we spoke about earlier. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4. That we will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Lord, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, let me remind you, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, you can join us across all three digital platforms, uh, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Bayside Chapel, DepotBay.Online.Church. And then starting next Sunday, we'll still be in Phase 1. And so at church, again, there won't be any coffee, there won't be any donuts, the bathrooms will be on emergency uh, use and clothes. The seats have already been partitioned off. And now, uh, starting Wednesday in Lincoln County, you will have to wear face masks. Uh, you can uh, look there at the Lincoln County guidelines to see what exemptions are made. But we'll see everybody Wednesday night online or next Sunday morning online or in person. Lord bless you. Have a great Father's Day.